So now we're going to tell you a story, a wonderful story. It's a lovely picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever It's about Abraham's great test, the greatest test that anyone, any human being has ever been asked to go through. And remember, um, just to recap, Abraham is now an old man. He's 100 years old. And he have, both him and Sarah have their little son called Isaac. And Abraham loves Isaac. And he began to spend a lot of time with his son. In fact, he began to spend more time with his son than he did with God. And God never likes anyone or anything to become more important than he is. And God decided to test Abraham. And as he would play with Abraham, he realized Isaac was playing with Abraham. And as he was growing bigger, one day at night time, God speaks to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac and I want you to prepare him for a sacrifice. Abraham goes, Lord, you mean the way we would prepare an animal for a sacrifice, like a ram or a bull? Yes, Abraham, I want you to take your son. Your... And Abraham goes, my son, my only son, Isaac. Yes, Abraham. And Abraham and I was tested. What was he going to do? Challenge God or obey God? Or worse than that, disobey God? And Abraham, early in the morning, woke up little Isaac and said, Isaac, he's maybe a young boy, maybe early teens at this stage, and said, Isaac, God has spoke to me last night and he wants us to go to the mountains to have a sacrifice. And Abraham was not that excited, but he had to hold back what the real message that God was teaching him. And Isaac was all excited and both of them got up early in the morning. They woke up a couple of servants, prepared a few donkeys and they made their long way to Mount Moriah. This is maybe 50 miles away and it would take maybe three days to walk this journey. And as they walked, and no doubt they were excited and Isaac would go, Father, I've got the wood. As he would pick the wood up, Father, I've got the wood and you've got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? How could Abraham possibly explain that Isaac was going to be the sacrifice? And Abraham told his servants to wait at the bottom of the mountain. He told them to wait there and he said, you wait here and we will return. He knew that even after he killed his son Isaac, his faith was so great that God would bring Isaac back to life again. That's great faith. But how could Abraham tell Isaac that he was going to be the sacrifice? And he couldn't. So he simply said, God himself will provide a sacrifice. And whenever they got to the top, they began to build an altar with stones. They would lift huge stones put them together and then Isaac again would say they would put the wood in the top he said father where's the animal where's the sacrifice because he had sacrificed many times before that's what God asked the people to do to get an animal mainly a sheep a ram or a lamb and they would kill it and through the shedding of its blood was the forgiveness of sins that's what the Lord Jesus done remember the Lord Jesus on the cross shed his precious blood to take away our sin and here was Abraham, and he sits, sits, sits Isaac down, and he says, Isaac, the other night God spoke to me, and he told me that to take you and to prepare you for a sacrifice. Now Isaac was young, he was strong, he could easily have outrun his father, he could have rebelled, he could have got angry, he could have crossed, but he, he didn't. He willingly climbed up onto the altar and laid down his life. That so much reminds me of the Lord Jesus. Because there was Isaac willing to die because his father asked him to. Whenever God the Father sent his son, the Lord Jesus, into the world, Jesus never rebelled. He simply went all the way to the cross and laid down his life for our sin. So the altar reminds me of the cross. Abraham reminds us of God. And of course, Isaac reminds us of the Lord Jesus. Then they would have said their final words and no doubt Abraham would have had tears in his eyes as he lifts his big knife right up into the sky about to bring it right down into the heart of his son Isaac. So looking away, this knife goes up and just about as he's about to plunge the knife right into the heart of Isaac, he hears a voice, Abraham, Abraham, throw down your knife. Don't harm your son. And Abraham looked around him the angel of the Lord came and told him not to harm Isaac. And the message came through, Abraham, you weren't asked to kill Isaac. You were asked him to prepare. You were asked to prepare Isaac so he could be killed. 
But of course he wasn't, but he did pass the test. He was willing to do what God asked him to do. And he turned around and God planned for a little ram to be caught in the thicket of the bush, caught as thorns in the bushes, and Isaac was set free. And that day the ram was put up onto the altar and it was killed and it was set on fire to be burned as a sacrifice. Do you know Isaac also reminds us of us? Because the difference is that day Isaac was set, or the Lord Jesus, Isaac was set free and the ram became a substitute. The Lord Jesus became our substitute. We have been set free because of what Jesus has done for us. But something had to die and that day the ram died and shed its blood for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus died that we can have life. The Bible says if you've got the Son, you've got life. But if you don't have the Son of God, you don't have life. This was a lovely picture of what the Lord Jesus was going to do, the final sacrifice for the sins of the world, my sin and your sin.